the most unreal moment in WWE. Number one, drop 20 feet from a forklift. Now Vince McMahon has a thing with cars and attempted vehicular manslaughter, but the ending to the Triple H vs Stone Cold Steve Austin match was a bit head scratching. Now visually, it was cool to see Triple H hoisted up in the air by a forklift and drop 20 feet. And to be fair, Stone Cold had a justified reason to commit, well, murder, as Triple H did run over the former WWE champion. Now, realistically speaking, Triple H should have been dead. Now, granted, we're not an expert on being dropped 20 feet from a forklift, but there's no way in hell Triple H could have survived such a fall. At the very least, he should have been severely injured. But you know what's worse than the fall itself? The match just ended without any result. This was a no DQ match. All of this was legal. Why were the WWE League fans hanging by simply ending the match without a firm conclusion? In the moment, this was an exciting spectacle, but once the adrenaline rush of seeing Triple H murdered ends, you'll realize how badly booked that ending really was. Number 2. Kane goes crashing through a booth Our confession time. We enjoyed the Shane and Kane feud. It was ridiculous, over the top, and bloody good fun, but it's hard to ignore some of the most unbelievable moments throughout this feud. And we can't cover every single thing, but we can recall their infamous ambulance match. Despite the build, Shane and Kane's matches were mostly grounded and realistic. However, the purpose of this feud was to put Kane over as a monster, so Shane backing a truck into Kane that sent him smashing through a security booth wasn't a surprising moment. A WWE is no stranger to hit and runs, but it rarely happens during a match. Given the nature of this rivalry, this moment is tame compared to Kane falling into a dumpster of fire or Shane's balls being electrocuted, but that doesn't make this moment any less believable. Number 3. Zombie Lumberjack Match What in the hell was this? Damien Priest was coming off a hot match with Bad Bunny, and this killed some of his momentum, and none of it was his fault. WWE got paid to advertise Zack Snyder's Army of Dead, and instead of a casual logo or even a backstage segment promoting the film, Vince McMahon came up with a brilliant idea to advertise this Netflix movie in the middle of the Miz vs. Damien Priest feud. This wasn't a tongue-in-cheek moment, this zombie attack was treated as a serious thing. The company was lucky that this match took place during the pandemic era because this would have been booed out of the building live. The whole thing was absurd and took you out of the action between The Miz and Damian Priest. But given the history of Vince McMahon, he probably got a kick out of this match. It's a shame that it came at the cost of making Damian Priest and The Miz look like lower card goofballs. Number 4. A Literal Eye for an Eye Match Was Vince watching Hostel when he thought of this idea? How else would he get an idea of two men trying to take each other's literal eye out for entertainment? Now, this is Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio. These two don't need stupid gimmicks like this. Just let them go out there and wrestle. But 2020 was a weird period for wrestling in general as COVID-19 impacted the entire world. This forced WWE to think out of the box. And while the Boneyard and Firefly Funhouse match was entertaining and different, not all ideas were on the same level. The Rey Mysterio Seth Rollins feud was solid in execution, but it was hard to take this match seriously. The moment that Rey Mysterio got his eye literally popped out was even worse. The effect was laughably bad and killed the seriousness of this feud. Hopefully, this was the first and last time an eye for an eye match ever happens. Number 5. Throwing your opponent off the roof of a building So we discussed how WWE has a thing for attempted murder. In fact, it wouldn't be a surprise if Vince had dreams of killing his employees in his sleep. Nevertheless, the pandemic era of WWE was insane. While the company should be applauded for trying something new, the 2020 version of the Money in the Bank ladder match wasn't so great. There were plenty of ridiculous and eye-rolling moments, but the most egregious was Baron Corbin throwing Rey Mysterio and Aleister Black off the roof of WWE HQ. Now look, obviously Black and Mysterio landed on a pile of cushy marshmallows down below, but this was still attempted murder. Worse off, this wasn't treated as a serious angle. Mysterio and Black were perfectly fine the next day. It's hard enough to believe that two wrestlers can survive being tossed off the roof of a huge building, but to have them no-sell that moment makes wrestling come across as extremely fake. Now I know that we live in a world where kayfabe is dead, but how can fans invest in a match that's billed as dangerous if they know for certain that element of danger doesn't exist? Once these guys are in the ring, there still needs to be a level of believability that allows fans to buy whatever WWE is selling between those ropes. Number 6. Face on Fire If you haven't noticed, WWE has a thing for spooky nonsense. Take Kane vs The Undertaker in 2010. There's no denying the Hall of Fame career that both men have had, but this latest chapter in their feud was a massive misfire. It started interesting with Kane even pulling out a strong performance in his search to find his missing brother, but then it all went downhill when their matches began. Their 2010 Hell in a Cell match was easily the worst of their feud. It was slow and plodding, and this being the PG era, the lack of colour hindered it even further. However, what made this such a terrible match was a god-awful ending. Paul Bearer turned on The Undertaker by flashing a small light in his face. 
It was an extremely ridiculous moment as the light was supposed to be something supernatural, but nobody bought that moment for one second. It made the Hell in a Cell match end on a cartoonish note and took Kane vs The Undertaker in a very bad direction. Number 7. The Fiend is Burnt to a Crisp The Fiend is one of the best characters in modern WWE, but it's also an example of the worst parts of WWE. Vince McMahon never found a proper way to use The Fiend, and the character's final months leading into WrestleMania 37 simply wasn't good. He was in a seemingly never-ending feud with Randy Orton. In the middle of this feud, these two had a Firefly Inferno match, and now Inferno matches don't particularly have a history of being great. They're not exactly on the level of Kennel from Hell match or even a Punjabi Prison match, but no one has ever praised an Inferno match as something truly great. And that was no different with this match. It was sports entertainment at its finest, and not in a good way. But what pushed this bout over the edge was the ending. Randy Orton winning the match was fine, but WWE couldn't help themselves as they wanted to go out with a bang. So how do you do that? Well, have Randy Orton burn the fiend to a crisp. Randy Orton doused him in gasoline and set the Fiend on fire. It was an asinine moment that further took you out of the Orton Fiend feud. In 2020, Rey Mysterio's eye popped out and Baron Corbin threw two men off a building, but this moment was the most egregious out of all of them. The Orton Fiend rivalry was already bad, but it took it to another level of terrible. Number 8. John Cena loses because of demonic possession. Hocus Pocus finished number 284. A wrestler loses because of a demonic child. The whole layout of John Cena vs Bray Wyatt wasn't good. The psychology of the match saw Cena at a severe disadvantage as he had to fend off an entire family. Now, the problem with this is that the pinfall option was also available. John Cena looked like a complete fool by continuously trying to escape the cage knowing that Harper and Rowan were outside waiting for him. The former WWE Champion pinned Wyatt at WrestleMania clean so why couldn't he just do the same thing here? Not only did the match make Cena look stupid, but it also made Bray Wyatt look weak. Despite his best efforts, there were several occasions where Cena had the match won. Then someone had the bright idea for a distraction finish. This time, it's due to a demonic child singing <laughs> While the finish was creative, it was nonsensical, and it took away from what made the original Wyatt family so terrifying. Bray Wyatt's cult was menacing and compelling when it was grounded in realism, but the supernatural elements just made him and the group feel like cheap C-level horror movie villains. It was an awful finish that did more harm than good to Bray Wyatt. Number 9. Seth Rollins Tries to Kill the Fiend Attempted murder never goes out of style in WWE, at least under Vince McMahon's era. What made this so egregious is that it caused a freaking DQ in a Hell in a Cell match. The balls on Vince to go through with this booking is outstanding. This feud killed Seth Rollins as a babyface and was also another example of how terrible The Fiend was booked. A creative tried to paint him as an invincible monster, but that only made his matches lack any suspension of disbelief because WWE booked him too strong in the beginning. You think Vince would have learned his lesson about booking disqualifications in Hell in a Cell matches after the backlash he received a year prior, but it seemed like the former CEO got a kick out of pissing off the fans during this period. The match wasn't particularly great to begin with, but it was never on the level of terrible. Until the finish, this finish left a bad taste in everyone's mouth. Going through the history of Hell in a Cells before this, fans have seen a lot worse than what Seth Rollins did. And even if they didn't, this is a no disqualification match. It ruined some of the Fiend's momentum, wiped out any that Seth Rollins had, and it turned off longtime fans who were done with Vince's booking. Let's hope that Triple H never gives us an ass nine moment like this ever again. But there you have it, folks, the most unreal moments in WWE. Be sure to leave your comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.